But before we get into the more complex biology, I want to talk a little bit more about plant biology. Why should we be studying plants in general? Well, first of all, and I hope this is obvious to most of us, plants are the source of all oxygen and all of the carbon in the world. You know, we can't live without plants. They produce everything we breathe, everything we eat, the clothes I wear, the chairs we sit on, the fuel we burn in our cars, um, the drugs we take. Everything that we have is based by plants. You know, plants are actually, in a large type, we, in a large sense, we can relate to them as sort of as factories that produce chemicals for us. For example, vitamin C, we can't produce it, but plants do, and that's why we drink orange juice. Um, vitamin A, carotene, um, caffeine, how many of you had coffee this morning, tea? You know, we really enjoy our caffeine. We can't make it. The plants take light, and in their leaves, they make these chemicals that we all use. Morphine for as painkillers, THC, which for marijuana, all of these things are made by plants where they take light, they take water, and they make these chemicals for us. So that's the first reason we need to study plants because it's really all of our life around us is dependent on it. But you might not have thought of this, but plants have affected all of human history. So think of what plant do you think has had the greatest influence on history or on your life personally. And I'm going to give you a couple, couple options here. We can look at wheat, potato, yams, poppy, the mulberry tree, cotton, or the rubber tree. So take a second, think about these plants, and fill in on your screen which one do you think has most affected human history. All right, so now that you've put in your answer, um, let's see what everyone else thought. As you could see, the majority of people thought wheat, but there are people who picked each one of these options. So let's go briefly through each one, and then at the end you'll have a chance to change your answer if you want. So wheat, why wheat? Well, 10,000 years ago, somewhere in the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia, from Iraq, up through Turkey, um, Syria, down in through present-day Israel, some nomadic farmer, some nomadic, sorry, it wasn't a farmer even yet, some nomadic gatherer hunter had the wherewithal to gather some of the wild wheat that was growing there in the Fertile Crescent, to save the seeds, and to plant that the next year. This was the first crop that was ever cultivated, and it was actually the cultivation of wheat allowed for all of modern history, because the cultivation of wheat allowed for people to plan for their food, it allowed for the first communities, it allowed for written history, and everything that all of modern history that proceeded from it was because of the cultivation of wheat. Later in life, later in history, also rice was cultivated, corn was cultivated, other animals were cultivated, other plants, but wheat was the first plant that was cultivated to allow modern agriculture. The mulberry bush. What's the importance of the mulberry bush? Well, the mulberry bush actually is the only food of the silkworm. And the importance of the silkworm in history was, of course, the route to the East, that Marco Polo found the East. And the trade with the East opened up the whole world connecting West and East. That obviously affected modern history. How about the opium poppy? Well, I guess you can understand how the opium poppy affected history. One, it allowed for the first analgesics, painkillers, which, you know, uh, has affected all of modern medicine, but also affects modern history with a drug problem. So, of course, here we see one plant making one chemical affecting both good things and bad things in human history. How about the potato? How has that affected history? And I'm not really going to talk here about McDonald's. The potato affected history because of the Irish potato famine. In the 19th century, there was only one strain of potato growing in all of Ireland. Unfortunately, though, this strain was sensitive to a fungal-like pathogen called Phytophthora, and this pathogen wiped out potato yields for several years. This led to the huge famine, which led to death of a million people, and to the emigration of another million people to other countries in Europe and to North America. One of these people were the family of John Kennedy. This obviously affected modern history. How about cotton? How has that affected modern history? Well, of course, modern cotton has affected us by what we wear. You know, if you like wearing blue jeans, if you like wearing nice t-shirts. Cotton, actually, though, the, the, the need for cotton was one of the impetuses for the 
importing of slaves from Africa to the, to the New World, to North America. The rubber tree. How's the rubber tree affected it? Well, I, if any of you have ever gone on an airplane, if you've flown anywhere, that's you're dependent on the rubber tree. Because the rubber that comes from the rubber tree, natural, natural rubber, is the only source or is the only material that airplane wheels can be made of. There is no synthetic rubber, there's no synthetic type of plastic that can match the, the characteristics of natural rubber. So without rubber, we would have no air flight. Last one, yams. And I'm not talking here about sweet potatoes, but I'm talking about yams. How have yams actually affected our history? Well, I think you'll probably be surprised to know that yams led to the development of the modern birth control pill because yams contain a phytoestrogen, and it was from yams that they first isolated this estrogen that was the source for the first birth control pills. I think this has obviously affected many of our lives. So now that we've gone all through these again, take another second and refill out this, the, the survey. Which of these plants do you think has affected your life the best? So, I think you could see that really our entire life is affected by plants, whether it's by the coffee we drink. I mean, how many of you drink, let's say, two cups of coffee a day? Uh, I know I do. You know, just for me in the world, there are 15 coffee trees that need to be grown to supply me with my two cups a day. If you multiply that by all the coffee drinkers in the world, think how much coffee we need to grow in order to supply that need. If there are any musicians among you, you know, the wood that goes into a Stradivarius violin or to a Martin guitar completely affects what type of tone you get. It's because of the characteristics of the wood that can't be matched by anything made of plastic or that's synthetic. Or a natural wood basketball court. Or aspirin, for example. It comes from a plant product. So our entire life is really completely dependent on plants. So the next assignment is I want you to go into the forum and write down what plant could you not live without and why. And we'll discuss this in the forum.